This story is about a man that spent 20 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. The actor Denzel Washington played that man in a movie, but today we're going to talk about the real-life crime against Reuben Carter and John Artis. In 1962, James Meredith became the first African American to enroll in the University of Mississippi since it was founded 118 years earlier. It took 6,000 military men and women to make sure he survived his enrollment. 27 days later, a boxer named Reuben Hurricane Carter would make his television debut where he knocked out Florentino Fernandez in 96 seconds. Reuben Hurricane Carter. By this time, he had 15 professional fights. Of the 15, this one was his 13th victory and 11th knockout. In 1963, in his mid-20s, Ruben was known as a knockout specialist and was ranked the number five best middleweight boxer of his time. Three years later, on June 17, 1966, at 2.30 a.m., two men entered a tavern in Patterson, New Jersey and unloaded. Four people were hit, and unfortunately, two people didn't make it. It was a horrible sight, as the two criminals used the 12-gauge. It was a crime scene where bodily f***s were all over the walls and the floors looked like it was painted red. Within 30 minutes after the tragedy, law enforcement pulled over a vehicle. The occupants of that vehicle was two men, Reuben Carter and John Artis. They were first taken to the crime scene for everyone to see. Then, they were brought to the hospital to be identified by a surviving victim. The victim was asked, are these the men that did it? And the victim replied, no, that's not them. Police insisted, are you sure? The victim said, yes, I'm sure, that's not them. They were immediately brought into the station and given a polygraph and both men passed. Three weeks later, the lead detective, Vincent de Simone, stated to a grand jury that the two men could not have been the ones that committed the crime as they did not fit the descriptions or have any weapons and their clothing didn't have any evidence of a massacre that took place. And to top it off, they both took a polygraph two hours after the incident and they both passed. As pressure to solve the case increased, the mayor offered promotions and money incentives to officers if they would arrest two men and solve the case. So in October, which was four months after the crime, Ruben and Artis was rearrested and charged with committing a triple. The trial was scheduled for April 1967 and the state was seeking the penalty. By this time, the third victim passed away from her injuries of getting hit in the stomach. The fourth victim, although he was hit above the neck, he survived. All of a sudden, two witnesses, a 23-year-old named Alfred and a 22-year-old named Arthur, was found. Why they were in the neighborhood on the night of the incident, they were literally helping to rob a location two blocks away from the tavern. Both men were convicted felons that did time before and after this event took place. In May of 1967, a jury of eight men and four women that looked nothing like Reuben or Artis returned a guilty verdict. They would then be sentenced to three life sentences for a crime they didn't commit. Alfred would then be emboldened to request the $10,000 reward for the information leading to their arrest and conviction. He also requested a $500 reward that was posted by the New Jersey Tavern Association. He never received the money, but it was part of his motivation to take the stand. In November 1967, the policemen involved were honored by the Fire and Police Commission. By 1972, prisoner number 45472 would lose sight in his right eye while serving time. He would go on to write a book that was published about a year later. In September of 74, the star witnesses publicly recanted their testimony against Ruben and Artis. 
They told the New York Times that they were pressured by Passaic County detectives into committing perjury. Arthur Bradley stated, quote, I saw a way out of my own mess. I lied to save myself. They promised they'll take care of me if I got jammed up again. Alfred continued to say, quote, They gave me a big brother line. The cops told me I'd be doing justice for the families of the victims. It would be an eye for an eye. That same month, Arthur was arrested and released on bail for punching his mother in the face. What you're about to hear is Alfred's own words, in his own voice. I didn't give any statement at that time to anyone. I was later questioning about it and questioned for weeks on end, and uh, I believed I was used by the prosecutor's office. I told them I had seen two black males. They were telling me, you've seen John Artis and Reuben Carter. After both witnesses recanted, Reuben's lawyer requested a new trial, but a New Jersey judge refused to grant that new trial. The story started to escalate. Newspapers and private investigators started to work and they uncovered a recording from the original trial that was not shared with Reuben's defense. On that recording, the lead detective, Vincent DeSimone, was heard promising leniency to Alfred for his cooperation. This was an issue because Reuben's defense never knew about all the deals that were made to reward the two witnesses if they lied. In October of 1975, the fight between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier took place. This was a big fight as it was the third and final fight between the two men to decide who would become the heavyweight champion of the world. It was known as the Thriller in Manila. Two months later, they would put aside their differences and get together with Bob Dylan at a benefit concert named Night of the Hurricane, where Dylan performed the song named Hurricane, which is a song he wrote about Reuben and his fight for freedom. It was huge. It took place in New York City at the world famous Madison Square Garden, the same location where Reuben made his television debut. Three months later in March of 76, the New Jersey Supreme Court orders a new trial. A new trial took place, but it didn't help. They were found guilty again. Two years later in 78, after years of emotional hell, Reuben and his wife got divorced. Sometime around 1979, two Canadians that were visiting the United States to do research met a young child from Brooklyn. That child's name was Lesra. Something about Lesra piqued their interest and after some serious decision making, Lesra's parents allowed him to go back to Canada so he could be educated by the visiting researchers. As Lesra was illiterate, his new teachers surrounded him with education and books. One of those books just happened to be named The Sixteenth Round, which was written by Reuben Carter in his first few years behind bars. When he was finished reading the book, he wrote a letter from Canada to the New Jersey prison, and to Lesra's surprise, Reuben wrote him back. And this would be the beginning of a new chapter in all of their lives. That same year, lead detective Vincent de Simone would pass away from cancer and issues related to his heart attack. Lesra and the researchers would move from Canada to New Jersey and live in a home within visual sight of Rahway State Prison. This would become home base where they would join the fight for Reuben's freedom. In 1981, after serving approximately 15 years, John Artis was released on parole. The Canada team and the American team started working together. They found more instances where the prosecutors from the first trial in 1966 hid evidence from the defense. One of those instances was withholding the results of the star witnesses polygraph test. Another was the recording of detective Vincent de Simone telling Alfred that if he cooperated, he will help him with his parole and take care of him if he gets into trouble in the future. The recording was made three days before Reuben and Artis was rearrested 19 years ago in October of 1966. 
After 19 years of fighting in the New Jersey state courts, in 1985 they petitioned a federal court with all the new discovered violations. And on November 7, 1985, Judge Sarakin made a decision to grant Rubin his freedom. After his release, the prosecutor said that Rubin should be examined by a psychiatrist and returned to prison. The federal judge said the conviction of Rubin and Artis was, quote, predicated upon an appeal to racism rather than reason and concealment rather than disclosure. Rubin would enjoy 29 years of freedom until he passed away in 2014. His friend John Artis passed away in 2021 at the age of 75 years old. This was the story of John Artis and Ruben Hurricane Carter. If you enjoyed this content, click on the next episode from Big City Crime TV.